welcome to Daryl's Beekeeping Videos. I'm a master beekeeper and today's lesson is on how to transport your bees that you are going to get uh, from a nucleus colony or any other bees for this matter but I'm mostly dealing with how to transport a nucleus colony. It's March, mid-March right now uh, and most of you are probably going to be picking up your nucleus colonies at either at the end of March or all the way through the end of May depending on when the nucleus colonies are available in your area. So a lot of new beekeepers want to know how I transport those nucleus colonies back to my apiary. So this video will cover those very uh, those topics. Um, so one of the first things you need to ask the person that you are buying your nucleus colony is do they require a frame exchange? Uh, a lot of old beekeepers used to require that when you pick up a nucleus colony, you would hand them five frames to replace the five frames of bees and pollen and honey that you're going to get in the nucleus colony. A lot of the new beekeepers that are selling nucleus colonies uh, today just incorporate that into the cost of the nucleus colony, but it's still a question that you need to ask your person you're buying the nucleus colony from uh, whether you need to provide them the new, uh, excuse me, the frames or not, uh, and be prepared for that. Next, you want to uh, make sure that you always take extra frames with you to fill out any box should you need to for spacing. Uh, so some of the things that uh, you're going to need to transport the uh, nucleus colony are either some form of temporary uh, transportation device such as this Easy Nuke by Jester B Company. Uh, you could also use this Pro Nuke uh, plastic container. You could also use an existing nucleus box that you want, uh, a five frame box. In this case, uh, I have an eight frame. You could also use a 10 frame. Uh, or if you have a swarm catch box that has a piece of plywood on the bottom uh, that you could transport them on that. There are a lot of ways to transport your bees once you get them. The biggest thing you have to be concerned with when you transport your bees is that they need to be secured uh, from falling apart and the bees escaping. Uh, the other thing they need to have is some kind of air. So when you transport your bees, you need to either A, get one of these uh, pre-made um, nucleus transportation boxes uh, that have the built-in screens um, to provide air and keep the bees from escaping, or if you're going to use an existing box, you're going to want some kind of strap. In this case, I have a, a one inch strap. Um, and then you'll need some kind of screening in the front uh, to protect those. Uh, and then again, you, again, as I said, you want the uh, strap to strap the lid down when you're done. Uh, the other thing you can do, and I'll have a picture of, a, of a, this box from a side, show, uh, side shot, is you're going to want to have these little hive staples when you're transporting your boxes. And the reason for that is, is you could just strap your box together, but when you transport it, you run the risk of the box shifting during transportation and a crack forming uh, where the, it creates a hole and your bees can escape as you're transporting. And if you're transporting in the back of a bed of a truck, it's not that big a deal. The workers will fly out. Uh, you'll lose some workers that way. But if you're transporting them inside your car, you're going to have a much bigger exciting time when those bees start to escape. So what I recommend that you do is you simply uh, staple your high bodies together uh, to the bottom board. And again, I'll show you a picture of that in the final version of this. But first, I'm going to talk about these um, easy nukes and the pro nuke boxes. So if you go this route, these are only meant to be a temporary thing, uh, transportation to get them from where you're buying them to your apiary. And then from there, you would transfer the frames from this box to your hive that you would have in your apiary. So this one is, uh, this is a corrugated plastic material, uh, like you, the old political signs. And it's all it is, is it comes, uh, either pre-assembled like this, um, or you can, they'll come flat and you simply uh, put it together um, and then you transfer bees, transfer your bees into this box um, and then you transfer them to your house. The other one that comes is, is this Pro Nuke box uh, again, and both of these are range anywhere between $15 and $20 if you buy them singly from your local bee store. If you get them in bulk, they run as little as $10 each. 
um, or in the case of Pro Nook, if you buy a lot of them, I forget the quantity, you can get them as little as $8 a piece uh, last time I purchased them. Again, so the Pro Nook has uh, a space for five frames as well. Um, and then again, if you're transporting them in a traditional column or high body setup, um, again, you're gonna wanna secure it. So I showed you these temporary ones. I'll set them aside. And then, excuse me, my uh, robbing moving screen moved. So if you are transporting them in a traditional hive, either a five frame or a eight frame or a 10 frame, you have a couple options. So as I told you before, and again, I'll have a still picture of this to show you a close up of this. You're gonna to wanna to put your hive staples into the high body and the um, bottom board. And when you do that, you wanna angle your staples at opposing angles. So if you put them at the same angle as each other, what you could potentially have is when you lift the box up, they could become a hinge and you could create a space for the bees to come out. So when you hammer these staples, you'll need four, uh, two on each side. You want them to put, be at opposite angles so that it's opposing forces and it can't hinge, become a hinge and create an open space and uh, allow your bees out. Again, I'll have a, a close up picture of showing exactly what that looks like. And then lastly, to keep the lid from popping off, you can either have a telescoping top or a um, migratory top, it doesn't really matter. And you want to uh, strap that down to the hive to keep it from moving around. And then to protect the bees from coming out the front, you have a couple options. You can either use one of these robbing and moving screens. If you have that, you simply put it on your um, hive body like this, and then you could just screw screws into the uh, high body itself, secure it, and then to secure the beads, you simply close the flaps on at the top and the side, and that will keep the bees in um, while you're transporting them. And then from there, you can just transport them in the back of your car. I've done that many a times, not a big deal. Um, you, you can also use, use this same concept if you are moving a hive from one apiary to another apiary. For example, if you're doing pollination services, uh, you could also package them up this way. So again, you can use a robbing and moving screen, it's pretty easy. And then the beauty of the robbing and moving screen is, is once you set it up in your apiary, it's all you have to do is open whichever gate you want, either the, the bottom or the top, um, depending on whether you think you might have some robbing, and you've got a built-in entrance reducer. Um, but if you don't want to do that, then you can simply use anything from one eighth inch mesh screen and either put it straight down or what I like to do is I like to put it at a 90 degree angle and staple it with just a regular uh, hand stapler, um, one of those uh, T50 staplers and I'll staple it on the top and then I'll staple it on the bottom on both sides of that L um, so that it gets a nice spot and, and uh, keeps it down from the bees from crawling out as I'm doing it, uh, transporting it. If you don't have that, just any type of window screening will work. Um, again, the bees aren't going to be able to break through it, but you're allowing air circulation to come through. So in my case, I happen to have some aluminum screening. You could also use fiberglass screening. It's okay. Uh, they're not going to get through that. If you had one eighth inch mesh, you could either, again, make it uh, just straight down and staple it that way. They're not going to be able to push it out of the way. Uh, or again, if you want to be extra secure, you can create an L shape with that one eighth inch mesh and staple it just like this window screening. Um, and then if you have a swarm catch box, uh, or if you don't want to take a uh, high body bottom to that, you can simply take a piece of plywood and then nail it to the bottom of, or screw it to the bottom of a high body and have a solid bottom for them to uh, be able to not penetrate through. And, if, and again, if you are using a swarm trap box, make sure that you do put screen over any entrance hole that you might have. Um, next thing you wanna do, if you're just doing a five frame uh, nuke into a five frame nuke box, then it's pretty straightforward. You just put all five frames in. If you are using an eight frame or a 10 frame box to transport your bees, what you will need to do, and that's the reason I started off with, you want to take extra frames so that you can flush out any of the 
spacing that you have in there. So when you get your nuke uh, bees, you're going to want to put them in the center of your hive body. And then from there, you just fill it out with the three frames. You'll put two frames on the outside of one side and then one frame on the other side. Or if you had an in-frame feeder, um, division board feeder, you could also use that in place of a frame or two and then fill it with sugar uh, syrup either partially uh, before you even load them in there, but I wouldn't fill it fully because again, you could leak syrup out. Um, or you simply put it in there as a space holder and then fill it up when you get home. Uh, again, not a big deal, but again, take extra frames to put them in. And again, I put them in there with foundation um, so that it keeps the um, frames and bees from sliding around and damage themselves during transport. Uh, I personally, whenever I transport nukes, um, I personally like to use a regular eight frame or 10 frame, whatever I'm putting in my apiary, simply because it's ready-made. So all I gotta do is put it exactly where I want it in the apiary, um, remove the screen from the front. As I told you before, you just take your, a knife or a hive tool, pop out the staples, pull off the screen. And then if you want to, if you're in an apiary where you're worried about some robbing, you can put a wooden entrance reducer in there to cut down on the space to prevent robbing. Uh, but if you're putting it up in an area where you don't have to worry about robbing, uh, then you can simply remove it in its entirety. Uh, and then from, like I said, from there, you wanna make sure that the bees have some kind of feed. So once you get in the apiary, you can either put a division board feeder in, or as I like to do, I like to put a Miller hive top feeder on and fill it so that they have syrup um, ready to start drawing out any comb because again um, you want to give them some work to do so either you can use these frames with just foundation which is what I recommend or if you have comb you can uh, put comb frames with comb in there uh, but I like to put uh, at least one frame of just foundation in there to give them some work to do um, and then again I put a hive top feeder on top um, and then from there last thing I do uh, is I put a strap on it after I put the hive top on um, for transportation, um, I cinch it down. And then, like I said, you can either transport it in your trunk um, if you're not moving far. If you're going for a long distance, I don't know if I'd really put it in a, in a trunk or car. I'd probably put it in, uh, in the back seat of my car. Uh, I've gotten bees from Georgia in the past, and I've driven this four hour drive from my house, and I just put them in the back seat of the car. If you transport them in your car, I highly recommend you carry a veil with you uh, so if you do have bees that escape some somehow that you aren't fighting bees uh, coming in contact with the head as you're driving uh, but other than that you really don't need much protection if they sting your hand as you're driving is not a big deal you can safely pull over reassess the situation and take a, a, a stapler with you staple gun with you and staple any holes in the uh, wire that may have formed somehow um, but again at least have some kind of veil you can quickly put on your head um, if you're transporting them in the back of a truck uh, bed, again, you could strap them down to the truck bed if you want to. But again, as long as you're getting air to them, you're all right. Um, so this is just a short video on how to transport nucleus colonies. Uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.